Hello! Welcome to the Now Man Show. My name is Nicewander. Joining us today is Robert Margoliff. He's the Grammy Award winning electronic music pioneer who has been affectionately called the godfather of electronica. He's an innovative record producer and engineer, audio expert and film producer. He helped to bring the Moog synthesizer into modern music with Stevie Wonder in the 70s on albums such as Talking Book and his Grammy Award winning album Inner Visions. And in 1980, he produced the classic song Whip It by the band Devo. Along with his collaborator Malcolm Cecil, in 1971 he released the album Zero Time as an electronic duo calling themselves Tano's Expanding Headband, which attracted Stevie Wonder and other leading artists to this emerging electronic music technology. He's worked with Stevie Wonder, Billy Preston, Depeche Mode, Oingo Boingo, Quincy Jones, Jeff Beck, the Isley Brothers, the Doobie Brothers, Joan Baez, Guar, and many more. He's co-produced Chow, Manhattan, a film about 1960s counterculture and collaborated with synthesizer pioneer Robert Moog. He's been a partner of Safe Harbor Pictures and a principal founder of Mikasa Multimedia, specializing in studio mixing of surround sound. He will be featured in the upcoming PBS special Sound Breaking, a series created by the late, great Sir George Martin. His current multimedia project with breakthrough artist Lexi Baker will be the first recording ever to be released in HBS 12.1 headphone surround sound technology. Robert Margoliff, welcome to the Now Man Show. Thank you very much for having me. It's my great pleasure. Uh, I was getting immediate gratification by playing the synthesizer. Yes. There was no school. You couldn't go to school or read a book about this is how you use the Moog synthesizer. Exactly. So I really had to put my mind to learning how to use the synthesizer. And one thing led to another, and I found myself at a place called Media Sound, and I was the synth guru yeah, yeah. at the studio. It was a com During the day, it was commercials. At night, it was closed because the union thing yeah, was yeah, heavy. Yeah, yeah. And that is where I met Malcolm Cecil. And, and so then you've created this electronic duo, which you called it yourselves Tonto's... Tonto's Expanding Headband. <laughs> yes, okay. What does Tonto stand for? The Original Neo Tambral Orchestra. Oh, wow. The interesting thing about the synthesizer was, that, and to this day people don't use the synthesizer that way particularly, yeah, yeah. is normally one person plays one instrument at a time and you mm -hmm. get two or three people in the room, they each have their own instrument, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, with the synthesizer, with the Moog that we had, Tonto, which was actually six synthesizers in a huge, turned into a huge and case. You had, you had the patch board too, right? Yeah, the, we had to patch everything. Yeah, it was all yeah, analog. Yeah, yeah. But the interesting thing was that it was many musicians playing one instrument wow. where the programming was interactive. Right, right, wow. So if like Stevie was playing a bass line, we would make the entire synthesizer transpose with that bass line so that I could then play string parts. And as long as I played everything on the white notes, I couldn't make a mistake. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because it would always be in the key of the bass line. Now, he heard your band, did he? Yes, we did. We put out an album. Herbie Mann heard us one night raving away in the studio at night because media at night was closed basically because yeah. the unions did, did insisted on double time for the players yeah. and the commercial people, you know, during the day I was doing things like Crazy Daisy toilet paper commercials. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, which did not, it was not really all that thrilling, you know. Guy sitting in the back of the room, he says, yeah, hey kid, because I looked like something like a refugee from a U-boat from another planet, right? Now, had hair like this with a gold vest on yeah. and had a joint sticking out of my <laughs> mouth. And uh, he would say to me, hey, kid, could you make that thing sound a little bit more like that tablecloth? You know, and I, I decided at that point that, you know, I, I really wanted to concentrate on really investigating electronic music synthesis. The synthesizer is not an instrument that imitates live instruments, yeah, okay? Yeah. A synthesizer takes the sound from the universe. Right, right, right. It's vibrating electrons. It's any sound that you want to make. It doesn't necessarily have to relate to a instrument from the past. That's right. What it was really was the first real major disruptor in yes. music and recording in the 70s. It really changed the face of pop music when we brought the synthesizer to, to bear in the pop music scene. Malcolm, myself, and Stevie were the first to 
sort of really genuinely explore it. Wendy Carlos was exploring classical music. Right, right. Other guys were doing, uh, you know, some uh, Tomita was there, Silver Apples uh, was Tangerine there. Tangerine Dream. Tangerine Dream. Jean-Michel Jarre. Yeah. yeah. All of those folks came on the scene, but they were all kind of, you know, trying to do space age right, stuff right. where our m music really sort of aimed itself directly at R&B. And that's where you started with working with, with Stevie Wonder. Correct. What happened was we did an album. Malcolm and I were in the studio late one night. We had this big, it was a former church. Media Sound was a oh, wow, former cool. church. Strangely enough, Bella Bartok lived in that building at one time. You mean time. Uh, Bella Lugosi? No, or Bella Bartok. Bella Bartok did. Yes. Oh, oh. In the 20s. Cool, yeah, But it was yeah. like a big church, and I had the synthesizer on a big sort of rolling gurney in the studio, so it looked very gothic. Excellent. And uh, Malcolm and I would go in there at night, and I say, Malcolm, I'm not even sure what we're doing is music. <laughs> okay, it was really pretty strange. It didn't matter though. Well, it didn't matter. Uh, Herbie Mann was in the studio one night, heard it. He was a very famous flautist, and uh, yes. had a vanity label called Embryo Records that uh, was distributed by Atlantic. And we put the. He said, you know, here's here, kid. Here's five thousand bucks. Go ahead and make your record, I'll put it out. I, wow. I said, Herbie, I'm not sure it's music. He said, I think it's music. And Malcolm says, he just needs a little editing. We'll put it together, we'll make it happen. Of course, Malcolm, genius yeah, yeah. player as well. Yeah. So we put the album out, and lo and behold, it got this incredible review in Rolling Stone. Wow. And Steve... That was 71, right? 71. Yeah. And Steve heard it, and the next thing we know, there's a knocking at this door on a Sunday. Yeah. at the studio. Malcolm lived on the third floor in the building next to the front door of the studio and we looked out and there was uh, Stevie in a pistachio green jumpsuit <laughs> with his uh, uh, with the guy who, who brought him by yeah, yeah. and Malcolm's friend fellow bass player Ronnie Blanco and uh, it started then and we didn't leave the studio for five years. Wow. And really what happened is we really were the disruptors of the technology and bringing electronica to pop music. But uh, you now, as the synthesizer evolved and it was used in pop music more and more and more all the time, how did Devo find you? And you, how did you find Devo? How did that come about? Because you well, produced I was one of my favorite albums, Freedom of Choice, which includes, of course, their most known hit, Whip It. Right, and strangely enough, I have just cut a cover of the original Whip It, which is, I guess, 35 yeah. years old, yeah. or somewhere near there, yeah. right? I have just recut a new version with Lexi Baker. I think now we're starting to, uh, audio is beginning to emerge into a new place. It's been a very sort of uh, interesting uh, disillusion of the old system, the studio system, and yes. the records, and the film companies are also now sort of disincorporating these big we might have big monolithic sort of distributors of audio, but right, right. you know you don't need to go to digital domain to do digital editing anymore. You That's can right. do it on your laptop in your living room. You don't need to go to a recording studio to do, you know, a big recording studio with acoustic flooring and walls and stuff to do uh, to do video, uh, audio or video, because now uh, our laptops have become our new folk instruments. Get your headphones out or your little earphones, and, and, and we're going to participate in this together, okay? So get ready to do that. And this actually, is, it's is, a first. This is a first on broadcast television, so we have another first here on the Now Man Show. So get ready. It's very Just to now. Let you know, we're going to do this, and then it's very now. It's very now, man. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, and I know that you, uh, you put on the website, HPS 12.1 is a disruptive new production technology based on mathematical and cognitive models of audio perception. Now, for the, uh, the gearheads and the, uh, the geeks out there, exactly how would you distinguish HPS 12.1 from the stereo surround sound? Because when people go, most people know, right? from like going to the theaters, like you go to you a Star have, Wars movie right now, and you hear all these different things in the room. Right now, you cannot hear surround sound on earphones. Yes. Okay. Yes. But now, coming along, not only with music, but now with virtual reality. Yes. Okay. Yes. Where everything is now starting to happen on headphones. Uh, we need to be able to have that same spatial, that sense of spatial awareness that we have in the real world, inside, the, whether it's music or gaming, if you're moving inside the space, your head tracking has to That's right. do stuff. But also, you have to be able to listen to the 
background to the music itself. Mm -hmm. You know, I was experimenting. The first record I ever produced, I ever mixed in surround was Superstition with Stevie. Oh, was it really? And, so and we had a quad control room. We were fooling around in 1972 oh, right. with a system called QS. Uh, and it was a quad that was supposed to live in vinyl. Yes, then okay. you're right. Okay. Different and so concept. The rooms, the control rooms, where we worked with Steve, we built that control room, Studio B, at the record plant. Well, the difference was, although we couldn't, I tried mixing Superstition and Quad, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and incidentally, I've just remixed a 16-track Master of Superstition oh, did you really? into cool. HPS 12.1. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. It can be heard on my website. Oh, you can, we can yeah, oh, go, go to margoleff.com and you can but hear you it. But you will have to, people who are really curious will have to get to, to reach me because that is a password-protected piece of material. Oh, yes, yes. But here I am 42 years later remixing the same song. That's great. The same thing is true with Whippet. I did a, the stereo and now I've done the HPS 12.1 version of it with Excellent. Lexi. Excellent. So is the wheel turning once again? Yes. yes. Is the new yes. disruptor coming when we can start to finally have the full That's right. co concept of surround audio yes. in headphones where you can be on a skateboard and listen to your music and have it in surround, That's where fantastic. you can bring that entire That's wonderful great. emotional energy, the situational awareness of music and effects inside and let it unfold in your head. Front left channel, front right channel, center channel, left side channel, right side channel, left rear channel, right rear channel, upper front left channel, upper front right channel. Upper rear left channel, upper rear right channel, the voice of God. The voice of God is directly over your head. Yes, exactly. So we now have a full space. Wow. Okay. And uh, what we've brought into the studio uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, Lexi's first single, uh, which is mixed in both stereo and HPS. And strangely enough, HPS can live in vinyl. Wow, wow. So. Her album, uh, Ultimate Reality, which will have seven songs on it, uh, on one side the vinyl is in stereo, and on the other side the vinyl is in HPS. And, and this is, format's going to be available through all sorts of audio and video, like on iTunes and Amazon and Google. And Everywhere. And, and every... Tidal and Spotify and SoundCloud and Bandcamp and Reverb Nation and all this stuff. Yes, all the aggregators. It brings the music, the emotional content back to music in terms of being able to create things that are totally free, existent in space and electronica, but uh, we can create our own world in our own space. And I think that that's what really makes it wonderful. Thank you so much, Robert. And be sure to look for the PBS special coming up, which is Sound Barriers. Also, sound this breakers. is Nice Wonder and Sound Breakers. And you are watching The Now Man Show with Robert Margaleff. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Thank you. And watch your show now, man. That's right. <laughs>